Welcome everybody. I'm very happy to welcome you today for this uh, webinar dedicated to Monaco and its uh, entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, my name is Audrey and uh, I am uh, an animation manager at the International University of uh, Monaco. And today I would like to introduce to you our speakers who are going to tell you everything you want to know about Monaco and the opportunities that await you there. So with us today, we have Mr. Kevin Hill, uh, who is the Secretary General of uh, Junior Chamber International. Junior Chamber International is a federation of uh, young leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, it welcomes members in uh, more than 100 countries, and it welcomes 200,000 members worldwide. Uh, today with us, we also have uh, Mr. Bertrand Petit, uh, who is a professor of management at IUM, and is also the managing partner of uh, Vitreviews Partners Group, and is the CEO of Vitreviews Holdings. Um, but uh, the uh, Virtuous company is an advisory firm um, that assists companies for project and change management with a very strong expertise in the field of uh, the hospitality industry. So um, just a few words before the presentation starts about Monaco itself uh, to give you an overview. So uh, Monaco is an entrepreneurial environment, of course, in very international with residents coming from the four corners of the world. We will tell you a word about it. Uh, it's also a very a dynamic and uh, successful um, environment for businesses. We have more than 5,000 companies uh, that have offices and HQ in Monaco. And uh, of course, as you all know, it's very well known for conferences and congresses. So on average, there are two events per day in Monaco, which means that there are more than 600 events per year in the principality. And well, Monaco, you know, it's known for uh, the glamour, like the casino and the Formula One, uh, but it's also one of the safest places on earth. So that's part of the, uh, the legend of, of Monaco, but it's true. It's a very safe place and uh, very nice to, uh, to live here. And of course, uh, no need to say it's all on the French Riviera. So it's more than 300 days of sunshine a year. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very pleasant uh, all, all, the, all year long, even during this time, you know, during winter. Um, so it's a very enjoyable place. So um, without further waiting, we are going to uh, start the presentation uh, from Bertrand and, uh, and Kevin. So Kevin, Bertrand, the floor is yours with the first question. Uh, Bertrand is going to start about the evolution of Monaco. What can you tell us, Bertrand, about the evolution of the principality over the three to five past years? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Audrey, and welcome, everybody. And it's my pleasure to be, to be here today. Um, well, having experienced Monaco uh, since I was a kid, I grew up here, and um, I can tell you that it has changed a lot. Uh, I, I left Monaco uh, when I was a teenager to go live in the US. I'm, I'm a big city type of, of person. And I lived in New York City. I studied in New York City. And I lived in New York City for a while. And I was always a little bit reluctant coming back to Monaco because I felt that, OK, well, you know, coming back to a very small village compared to living in, in one of the biggest cities in the world. Yet I did that. And I'm, I'm absolutely not regretting it. Uh, yes, Monaco is a village. But Monaco is a very, very vibrant village. Uh, it's connected all over the world. Uh, I created a recently Vite Reviews Partners Group with, with some uh, partners uh, here in Monaco and also in Paris. And I can tell you that we are connected with the world. Uh, Monaco is, is a capital in several uh, fields. Uh, you talk about, obviously, luxury. You talk about yachting. You, got, you talk about even cruising. And the cruise lines uh, are very present here. Uh, so there, there are a lot of industries that are very, very present in Monaco and that, uh, that are part of the ecosystem. Monaco is also a very vibrant city. Why? Because if you look in the past, let's say 10 years, I'll go a little bit further than what you said, Audrey, but Monaco has developed so much in terms of life, in terms of, you know, your ability. I remember when I was a kid, it was very sort of difficult to find things to do. In Monaco, and you would usually go to Nice and find find uh, things to do over there. It's not necessarily the case today. Today, Monaco is very vibrant for all ages, you know. And one great thing about the University of Monaco being at the center of the principality is, and I think Audrey, you say it very often, the the the, the campus is Monaco. Your campus is Monaco in in so many ways, in not only networking 
but also in just enjoying, enjoying life. And as you mentioned, this is a very safe place. This is a place where you have a lot of events, a lot of activities, a lot of associations. If you look at the number of associations present here in Monaco, it is absolutely mind boggling. And this presents a great opportunity for students, for prospective students to network, to network with people that, that matter but people that want to change the world. Now also Monaco, it, it, since the, the, the Prince um, coronation a few, a few years back, Monaco has set very, very ambitious targets as, as far as making sure that the principality has a role in the world affairs. And not only linked to, yes, of course, luxury sports and things, but sustainability management is very, very present. now. Also digitalization, Monaco, yes, it's a small country, but small is beautiful. And, and, and the principality is investing a lot of money right now in making sure that our industries, our companies are at the digitalization age, that they are very, very strong in that area. And that, that again, puts the principality in, in the scope of what, 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 what is happening in the world. Monaco is, is also a, a great place to just enjoy life. You mentioned Audrey, the, the safety, but it's, it's also when you see the students at the university, they always tell you, yeah, the education is great. And you look at the achievements of the University of Monaco in the past few years in terms of the quality of the education. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. But also just they, they will tell you, we just enjoy being here. And it's amazing how many students come to Monaco for the university and then they just don't want to leave. They, they say, you know what, we want to stay around. We want to, to study, yes, but now we want to, we appreciated the life, we appreciated the dynamism of the ecosystem and we want to stay around. And so I think that's, you know, in a nutshell that, that, covers, uh, that covers Monaco. But again, I think it, it, the best way to, to summarize it is, you know, you, you, you're considering today a university that yes, has a great uh, education system has a great quality of education, and that has the benefit that not very many universities have, which is our campus is the principality. Kevin? Yeah. Do you have anything? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Bertrand. That was so uh, exhaustive. No, that's a really great introduction. Not all I wanted to say on this front is that, of course, Monaco's been changing a lot. Uh, for the last 30 years or so. That, that's, I actually moved to Monaco from London uh, when, 32 years ago. It doesn't make me seem very young. But uh, it's when I was... Uh, so I entered high, um, secondary school and uh, had to learn how to speak French. And that's how Monaco was. In the late 1980s, it was a small village atmosphere. And it's grown exponentially, as you mentioned, Bertrand, thanks to mm -hmm. the impulsion of the... Uh, of Prince uh, Albert II since his uh, accession to the throne in 2005. Monaco had already developed a lot, but it's really developed a global outreach. We've got 120 nationalities, which we'll talk about later, in, mm -hmm. in two square kilometers, and it's really a huge melting pot. And this is what it is. Monaco is an open-minded, outward-looking place where you will feel welcome. And this has just accelerated uh, this transformation has really accelerated in the last three to five years with different industry clusters and uh, and different um, and different uh, opportunities, which I'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, and it's 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 amazing. I, I love I love Kevin. You have the background uh, of of Monaco as, as a background picture, and it's 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 a beautiful picture. Also, something about Monaco is keep in mind that it's not just about Monaco. Monaco sits in the center of the French Riviera. We're we're very near. We're only 15, 20 minutes away from Italy. We're near Nice, obviously Cannes. Uh, we are not far from Nice Airport, which when you when you go to Nice Airport, of course, you know, once the pandemic is, is, is over, but Nice Airport is the second largest airport system in France, and it connects you to all over the world. I mean, we have a direct flight to China, we have a direct flight to New York, we have a direct flight to, you know, most of the cities that, that matter from, uh, from, uh, from a business standpoint. And, and so again, it's, you know, Monaco, yes, it's very small. I remember when I was in New York, People used to tell me, oh, you, you're from Monaco, but it's very small, right? And I used to say, well, yes, it's actually the size of Central Park in New York City. 
And it is actually the size of Central Park in New York City. Yet on those two square kilometers, uh, you have so much wealth in terms, and I'm not talking about financial wealth, but I'm talking about economic wealth and, and dynamism and vibrant uh, life from both a, a personal standpoint and also an economic standpoint. So yes, it's, it's, it's an amazing place to be, to be living in and it's an amazing place to, uh, to study. And I'm sure we'll come back to, to the university itself because I have a lot of things to say. I've been, stu I've been uh, not studying, sorry, I've been uh, teaching at the University of Monaco for the past uh, eight years now or seven years. And I've seen the University of Monaco grow through this time. And uh, it is just an amazing, an amazing place, an amazing place which focuses also on experiential learning. And I think that's the beauty of having a university in the center of, of the city with the city as a, cam as a campus is, yes, it's, the theory is important. You get amazing classes with amazing professors, but what matters also is the experiential learning that I see at the University of Monaco is unlike anything that you'll find in other universities. And I can speak, I did my MBA in a, in a New York university, in a very famous New York university. And I can tell you that we have nothing to be ashamed of, quite the contrary. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, well, to put it in a nutshell, yes, it's, uh, it's a very special place. And, um, and we are going to tell you more about the uni and, and Monaco. And, and uh, the, the next question, actually, Kevin, is, is regarding the, uh, the uh, professional world in Monaco. Can you tell us what sectors are successful in the principality? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, yeah, just to wrap up, to add on what Bertrand was saying, indeed, Monaco is a unique place because it's so international and cosmopolitan. My education, university education was in London and uh, it was, I did my master's degree in finance there and um, it, was, it was the same. It was, you're very disconnected from the big city of 12 million, pe eight or nine million people, as opposed to Monaco, where you get to learn different things. At the same time, Monaco isn't just a playground. It's actually a living dynamic economy where we've got all sorts of industry sectors. Of course, the um, obvious uh, cliche about Monaco, it's all about gambling and tourism, uh, et cetera. Gambling only amounts to about 6% of the GDP now. Uh, so the casinos aren't what make Monaco survive. Neither is tourism. We've actually got a really diversified economy. We also have lots of banking and services like private banking, of course, but things are moving forward now. One of the, one of the biggest employers in Monaco is called SBM Offshore. So it's a Monaco company that employs 2000 people and which uh, is all about oil, uh, petrol drilling systems, and it works in the oil business as well, and very innovative and a big employer for engineers and a, a great way to attract people from around the world. In the last few years, there's also been a lot of diversification, which has been accelerated by the COVID situation as well. Obviously, travel and tourism have had to go down, but Monaco has already anticipated by creating industry clusters, notably in yachting, in the yachting business, there's a big yachting sector, and of course, the Monaco Yacht Show as well. Leisure business, of course, services, but now we're developing clusters in IT and also in health tech and education technology as well. There are lots of educational centers in, and pulse of excellence in Monaco, which is actually led by the uh, International University of Monaco as a pole of excellence, leveraging the best technology, which you also get in Monaco as well for digital teaching and uh, e-learning too. So Monaco is ahead of a curve very much on all these fronts and is a great place to actually invest in. And we're developing, as a member of the World Business Angels Investment Forum, I represent Monaco on that stage as well. And uh, we're actually developing Monaco as a hub for angel investment moving forward <coughs> too. There's a lot of diversification going on. Maybe Bertrand, if you have anything to add to the about sectors. Yeah, no, no. Well, you, you, men you mentioned the yachting uh, industry. Uh, we have we we have to know that uh, Monaco is the world capital for yachting, uh, even even before Miami. So, I mean, yes, absolutely. This is a huge. Uh, we we have. I mean, the yacht club of Monaco was uh, was uh, launched. I mean, the new yacht club was launched a few years back, and 
if you have never seen just Google, the Yacht Club of Monaco, it is one of the most amazing and beautiful building. But it's not just about the building, it's also about what they do. So yes, yachting is, is very good. Shipping, any, anybody interested in, in the cruise industry again or in shipping in general, uh, Monaco is, is certainly a hub as far as shipping. And uh, I come from the shipping industry, so obviously I have to, to place that one. But you know, it's it's an exciting it's an exciting uh, career opportunity as well. One thing about Monaco, and, and you mentioned Kevin, you know, all the entrepreneur part. But in, in the past few years, and it's quite recent actually, you have a lot of entities that have been created in Monaco to support entrepreneurs, to support people that say, you know what? Yes, I have an idea, I have a concept. And, and I want to, to develop it. And you know what? Monaco might be the great, a great base for me to do it. And it's true. Setting up a company in Monaco is, is made easier and easier. And, and especially, you know, they're focusing on technology, on, you know, uh, on, on IT and, and, uh, and things like this. And so for entrepreneurs, Monaco today is an amazing place, not just from a fiscal standpoint. Yes, there are a lot of fiscal advantages in being in Monaco, but also from just the support that you get from the principality in setting up your own your own entity. OK, thank you very much for, for your answers. Um, we would like to know, well, you already uh, answered part of this in the previous questions, but could you tell us if there are many opportunities in the principality from a professional point of view? Uh, Bertrand, maybe you can start. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Audrey. Yes, well, uh, obviously, right now with the pandemic, things have changed a little bit. Huh? But long term, it does not uh, it does not affect the dynamic of Monaco. And yes, Monaco, what, what you have to you have to understand something. Monaco, we have about thirty two thousand people who live in Monaco, right? Yet on a daily basis, on a daily basis, thirty five thousand people come to Monaco to work. So you almost double, you more than double the, the the amount of people in Monaco just from the ecosystem, the 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 the, the people coming to work to Monaco, that is here to stay. And again, it was it was made possible because the ecosystem of Monaco is is so uh, supportive of businesses and and um, and such. So yes, you have a lot of opportunities. You, you, for example, even in, in, in entities that we that were affected by the, um, the the COVID pandemic, today, yachting is hiring a lot. The cruise lines and the shipping companies are hiring, and uh, I I know it might be surprising, but they they have a lot of visibility now onto what's going on after what will happen after the pandemic. And I was on a conference call yesterday with the CEO of a cruise line, and 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 she said, yeah we are hiring now and these positions very often are here in Monaco. Uh, it, Kevin mentioned uh, the IT uh, and and uh, and that's also a, a very very strong uh, ecosystem for Monaco. Uh, I see a lot and I think that's one of the so-called benefits, let's call it benefit even though we, uh, we that might not be the right word but from from the pandemic is a lot of people want to go into entrepreneurship and I see and I try to support as much as as we can that's what we do through Vite Reviews also to to support companies that uh, or, or individuals that have an idea you know some of them say well you know what I have this product I, I think I believe in it I would like to to do something about it and I see a lot of those sort of you know one two people um, sort of entities being created in Monaco and, and launching great initiatives. Now we, we also have to think about um, uh, associations you know it's not just about uh, creating your companies but a, a lot of people also create uh, non-commercial ventures in Monaco and we have to look at that and this is a very vibrant uh, community right now so to create you know, people after the pandemic will, will care more about the well-being of, of, of the world, you know, caring about the world, caring about other people. It's not just about making money. And that's what I like about Monaco right now is the message is not, well, this is a place where you'll make money or this is a place for the wealthy. But it's also a place where we care about the world. And this is a very strong message that Prince Albert II has sent in 2005 also, well, it's, uh, you know, we want to, to promote sustainability issues. We want to promote things that are not about making money. And that's what I like right now. And that's what I see very, very, very strongly is people are uh, launching initiatives here that I haven't seen in many parts of the world. 
that are all about let's care, let's transform the world, let's change the world, let's find new ways of doing business or of caring about the world. And you have so many of those initiatives in Monaco right now, much more than I've seen in other cities. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The, um, that's a very good point you made, Bertrand, about the green economy. It's one of the great opportunities to move forward. And as I mentioned, Monaco is very forward thinking and ahead of a curve as well. So in terms of professional opportunities, the idea is, of course, we want you to love Monaco so much that you can stay afterwards, uh, after your university studies. The opportunities, of course, you can find a job in the yachting or cruise industry. However, there are opportunities to uh, create your own businesses as well. And the mindset is actually a great, which you'll find here in the atmosphere, is really a great way to try out new ideas in a safe environment because of the open-minded attitude of people, of potential investors. There are lots of opportunities made by the government. If you want to create your own business, for example, uh, JCI Monaco, for example, which is the organization I run from a global level, Junior Chamber International, uh, runs a best business plan project to create a, a business in Monaco. And the first prize is 40,000 euros in government grants. Second prize is 21,000 euros. So it's a great way to start up, start up your business. There's also a government-based incubator called Monaco Tech, where they really nurture small businesses with innovative mindsets to be able to grow in the future. And of course, the whole social um, uh, benefits are absolutely essential in creating a business and in getting government authorization to create a business. Anybody can create a business in Monaco. You don't have to be a resident in Monaco, just to answer one of the questions we got. However, everything is subject to government authorization. So you need to, it's a great safety net to prove that you have a sustainable business plan, first of all, but also that it benefits the Monaco economy as well, and is in line with the ethical standards and guidelines of a principality. So uh, these are the opportunities you can get. And of course, uh, anything regarding co uh, corporate social responsibility and boosting the sus UN sustainable development goals is also something which is hugely welcome in Monaco right now as a special hub for innovation, but sustainable in innovation first and foremost, not innovation at any cost. And I hope this gives you lots of ideas of opportunities. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kevin and Bertrand. Uh, well, we only have five minutes left in this uh, in this webinar. It's already almost time uh, because after uh, we will be happy to welcome you on the counseling sessions with the program directors. But before we leave, one last question for our panelists uh, today. Uh, can you tell us um, about the social events uh, that happen in Monaco through the year? Maybe that's why if you want to start with that one. Uh, well, so, social events are again, aside from, <clears throat> from the, the current pandemic, which, which has sort of affected social events. But as I mentioned before, you have so many associations, so many groups uh, of people here in Monaco. And, and also something that boosts social events is you have so many different nationalities. So I'm not sure exactly, Kevin might be able to tell exactly you know, how many nationalities, but you have so many different nationalities, so many expats, people that come here, not just to study, but also to work. So it creates by sense, by nature, it creates a dynamic where people get together and people do things together. And, and it's amazing how, and, and I haven't seen that, you know, coming back, coming back to my, my first comment about how the principality has evolved. Uh, this was not the case necessarily uh, when, when I was a kid, but today it's very easy to find a group, an association that corresponds to either your, your likings or your objectives, your professional or personal objectives. <clears throat> and I'm still discovering today uh, new new uh, opportunities to not only network, but also to have fun, you know, to, to meet people uh, either interesting on the personal level or, or on the professional level. And you don't need today to, to get out of Monaco. Now, also you can, you can, you know, you have Nice, Nice not too far. Uh, so you can also go out to Nice in Nice or, or Cannes or, or other areas. But yeah, Monaco today is very vibrant, like I mentioned before, and it's it's a great opportunity to meet people. The university also has initiatives to make sure that uh, its uni its uh, students interact 
with the local ecosystem. You know, they have the organized networking parties, they organize events uh, where they interact and they work with entities in Monaco. You know, the Museo Sonographique of Monaco being an example and, uh, and other ventures like this. So it's also a great initiative from the university to just to not just say, well, you study here and then, you know, you're, you're on your own, good luck. No, they, they try to make sure that there is, uh, they, they build, that students are helped in building relationship with, with local entities, either on a professional level or even on a personal level, you know, just to network and, and understand what living around here means. Yes, uh, totally agree. It's, it comes, it all boils back to what Bertrand was saying before, the principality is your campus. So uh, you're going to be, if you could drive up the International University of Monaco, you're going to be totally integrated in a whole enterprising, young and dynamic ecosystem where you can really uh, just be a key actor in, uh, in the principality. And uh, yeah, regarding the main nationalities, we we have mem we have 120 different nationalities represented in a population of 40,000 people. So oh, of course, wow. French, but you've also got Italians, British, including myself. Um, but people from around the world, we've got uh, citizens of China, Hong Kong. I believe we have Indonesians as well. And uh, I love the fact that we have such a global audience on this call from around the world, Japan, Indonesia, from the US, from everywhere, Italy, of course. And uh, this basically represents what IUM is like inside the MBA classes, but also what, um, but also what Monaco is like as well. Like Monaco's DNA is based on internationalism and an open mind. That's what makes the Principality so special. And this is also what makes IUM so special. Even though I never studied at IUM, I've been doing trainings and uh, presentations for the last 15 years or so. And I've seen the, all, the university evolve in this international mindset too. Another thing which uh, Bertrand said, which I want to touch on is the access. In Monaco, you can access government officials and business leaders in a much easier manner. Like meeting people like Bertrand with his career, for example, would be impossible in somewhere like New York or London or Paris, unless you're very well connected. But you can have professors of an incredibly high caliber who are teaching and also enterprising leaders and entrepreneurs at the same time. And global entrepreneurs like Bertrand is, for example, uh, there are also opportunities to network individually as well and to develop in industry sectors like yachting, like uh, like sports, like uh, luxury, which are the DNA, like you've got the Mark Business Plan competition at the International University of Monaco, where you can actually pitch your business project and many companies have actually been created, successful companies in sustainable fashion and luxury have been created through the, and incubated by the Mark uh, program as well. And also getting advice to start up. There are lots and lots of uh, projects which are available to help you. I mentioned Business Angels earlier on and we're working with JCI on many opportunities to do so. So I think this wraps up what I can say. It's a great place to, do social events, yes, you've got the Grand Prix, you've got the Yacht Club, you've got all the glamour and the hype. Dig deeper, learn French, integrate with the populations, and you'll be able to really tap into what Monaco really is, not just the superficial side, but also going deep down as well. So I hope this will have convinced you and we hope to see you in Monaco very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin and Bertrand, for being with us today. Thank you to all our participants. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you on the counseling session that are starting right now. So it's time to end this webinar. Thank you so much uh, for being our speakers today and for sharing uh, with us your insights about Monaco. And see you all very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.